Excellent. All right. Okay. Okay. Um, this is screen printing 101. Um, I've sort of said where I come from and all that sort of thing. So this is really about just how to print really quick. I'd like people to be able to use this as a reference piece. It's so going to literally go through the whole thing and try and get you into the mood of, of what we're doing here and how we do it. And the whole box and dice around the imprinter and around the imprint kitchen sort of system. And what I'm pretty much trying to do is enable people or give you reasons to believe that it's possible. Because we, I've, you'll see when we get out our actual print machines that we've done quite a fair few prints and we've tested all the scenarios that everybody thinks we shouldn't be able to print. And so I'll show you some of them really quickly here today and I'll be cutting between frames and I'll, I'll make mistakes and I'll do all that sort of really cool stuff. I'll make mistakes, I'll fall on my sword, blah, blah, blah. Um, I'll print stuff that's not very good, I'll print stuff that's fantastic. But basically we'll have a look through the whole box and dice and so we just get an idea of what's possible and the fact that it's possible wherever you are simply because all this stuff is portable and all of the stuff is settable up or anywhere and be work because, because we're working with water-based things it's going to pretty much um, be, be a non-toxic event and that's what I really really want um, I can't justify putting this into people's houses if it's a toxic event I'm really into health and fitness and that's really really important to me I think with schools anything like that it's absolutely paramount with kitchens, because you're doing food, it's absolutely paramount. All right, so first question, well, first subject is artwork. I've got myself a list here, if you want to scan down my list. This is really quite tricky. But see, my artwork on my screen preparation can sort of happen, you know, it doesn't matter which one happens first, but they've got to come together. And, they're going to, and then we're going to expose the art onto the screen, and then we're going to print, and then we're going to cure, actually, our finished prints, and so they, so they wash. And so that by curing, I mean, like, so we heat set, and there's like three or four different ways to do that. And then it's all about packaging, products, markets, exhibiting, that sort of stuff. And then stripping your screens. And we won't spend a lot of time in a, on a lot of these subjects, but you'll also get... Like if you go onto our, onto our website and you sign in for the newsletter, you'll automatically get our um, four Masterstrokes poster. And that pretty much has this essence within it. And it's all about fast, fancy or furious and so if you want to do something fast this is the solution, if you want to do something fancy this is a solution, if you want to do something furiously quick this is a solution. So it's about coming into it with no money or coming into it with heaps of money, coming into it with little or no time. And so it's about being flexible around those things but sign up on our website so imprinter.com.au and you'll just get one straight away and that's like an instruction book. And there's more coming but this is basically the idea and this is the attitude. So now we're just going to start on artwork. Pretty much if you send artwork, produced in Illustrator, produced in Photoshop, produced in anything, doesn't really matter. Um, send it to your print guy as black and he can make you a screen. Alternatively, if you're going to shoot your own screens, you still want a film in black. Um, I have worked with um, different people around the world and so we sort of like did Samara a couple of years ago and they were using old x-ray films and cutting out stencils from them. And so that's a perfectly viable way to make a screen too but it's also they were actually using paint rollers directly onto the fabric and that was pretty ingenious and they do a lot a lot of shirts um, they also cure out in the sun too on the hanging on hanging on clotheslines so it's pretty spectacular with it with artwork i don't really mind what your artwork is because i'm a i'm a illustrator and a graphic designer and all that sort of stuff but i'm also a screen printer and it's like to us when jobs came to us it's all about execution execution of that job and executing it as well as it can be done, regardless of whether it's Joe's squash courts or something for the art gallery. I didn't really mind. Like we printed for everybody from the opera house to literally the hamburger shop. It doesn't really matter. To me, it's about the execution of their art, their ideal, and doing it as best it possibly can, and finding those nuances in the colors, and finding the ways to make that screen really work. And so when I get to artwork, there's only a couple of things I really want to cover here really fast. Um, work in JPEGs and PDFs. I know a lot of really high-end art people will say, please don't do that because it's not detailed enough, but I, I, I think they're really quite portable and you can sort of send them around the place, very shareable, and they're a great place to start. And you really would just want to start with black on... So you work in black and your black image is always your information layer. And, and, and what it does is it holds all the information that you want in your picture and you just transfer that onto a film. And so by taking, sending a JPEG out to somebody or sending a PDF out to somebody, they can actually make your film. And we can do that. And there's also people in the States and people across the US, across Europe, that can do it for you too. There's, um, a couple of, um, there's a couple of ideas I have around artwork and it's really about the preparation of the artwork. 
if you're working with a photograph you sort of want to contrast it up a bit because when you actually print it onto something and you get a little bit, little bit of dot gain it sort of comes back to where it originally was everything goes through an interpretation with print um, also with artwork you have um, things like if you're working in Illustrator that same thing can be achieved by just putting a bit of a stroke on something like with screen printing I've sort of done a lot of really complex stuff and a lot of really simple stuff I really love the simple stuff I always think there's like three colors needed and like your mood which is usually the color of your t-shirt um, and your highlight and your detail layer and your detail layer always holds all the story so this is technically like when I draw I just draw in black and white and you always come back later and you color in this is not my artwork this is a guy called Bunkwa you should check him out he's pretty radical and matter of fact he's just like completely off his tree very original artwork and very very um, prolific in what he produces and really really solid very very insightful artwork although he's very very human based um, very very insightful artwork but this is the gift of artwork I mean like you can do serious stuff you know you can do quirky stuff you know it doesn't really matter what you do like here's my brand you know you can do this you know we're going to show you some stuff here really fast but basically all this stuff was just com created in a computer and very, very straightforward to print it onto acetate. Okay, I'm just making a film. It's pretty straightforward. I've just brought this is a this is um a grayscale film. It doesn't really matter that it's grayscale. It's, it could be just black. And I'm just all I'm doing is I'm sending it through this rip. You don't necessarily need a rip, and I'm going to explain that more. You don't actually need a rip at all. You just need somebody with a rip, um, and that's always going to be the case. But I'm gonna pretty, pretty much hit process the sand here, okay. Now we're gonna go start printing, and then you'll see it come out of the printer, just so everybody knows where our film actually comes from. This is what it comes from, it comes just out of a printer, just like this one, if you come over here. And so this is this, and all it's about is 100% black on a clear substrate. And you can get these from office works you can get it from staples if you're in the states you can get it from any sort of office supplier and if they're not if they're not black enough because you want 100 percent black you just put two over each other and you can also make them there's a hundred different ways to do that which i'll show you okay that's cool yep cool now if i was um if i didn't have a computer and i just wanted to bluff something if I wanted to blast something really fast, I would just get a piece of acetate or a piece of clear film of some sort, of any sort, you know, any sort. Like you get a clear, like folder case for all I care, and you sort of get a black text and you can draw on it. And it's like with films and with artwork, it's always about the opacity of the black. And so when you hold it up to the sun, the one that you can see the least through is the better one. And it's like, I, I really like the ink paint pens. And so regardless of the color, if you have to shake them to get the ink going, that's a good one to draw an acetate with. And from there, you can draw whatever you like, you know? It's like. Have you get the idea? You know, here, here we are. It's like, this is now a printable acetate. And it's like... A rat's tail. You know? You get the idea. Um, but anyway, so this is now a workable film. Now you might want to go over it, you might want to work on it a little bit more, you might want to come in and blacken in some lines. But, but really, what we're doing here is we're now creating art and it's working. And instead of like going back and second thinking it all the time and overworking it you can just sort of play so that's your artwork and that's all that's all i sort of really want to say about artwork it's like what you want to do is produce your art now what we're going to do is get into the technical of the screens now if you have a laser printer for example you can print onto you can print on these films, if, like a lot of these, a lot of your at-home printers will do this, but you've got to print onto a plastic clear background. And that's all about just having the black is what will actually end up being on your screen, which then causes an open colorway, right? So you can, you can have a screen that's shot, you have a screen that's shot, 
and it's like that shape is then open and you can push in through that and you can it doesn't have to be the particular color it can be any color so you, you print a white tomorrow you might want to print a blue but it doesn't really matter it's an open colorway so once you get in your head that all we're doing is we're creating an artwork or an artwork or an artwork putting onto clear acetate we can shoot any of these things onto a screen and then the screen is an open colorway this screen will last for years if you want to keep it also when you finish with it we can put a chemical onto it and we can take the emulsion out of it put another image onto it and that's the thing these are totally recyclable um, so we've had screens here that have had thousands of images on them and that's and that's the whole idea or you can keep it as a collection a lot of people do keep them as collections all right so with the screen so first of all I'm going to show you how we coat screens really fast you don't have to really do this we have a service where you can send us your artwork and we'll send you back your exposed screen and we have a service where We'll send you out a black bag screen, so a screen that's already coated in emulsion in a black bag so you can expose it wherever you are. Both work perfect, yeah? Um, but also, if, you want to, if you're sort of taking this, like there is a business kit, when we sell, when we send, when we sell our imprint machine, there is actually um, three models. One's a limited edition, full on one, sort of um, like done by these two like really radical artists here in Sydney, like pretty berserk, hey? unreal stuff. And um, one's like a business kit, and that sort of comes really complete for doing a whole lot of different sorts of production. And then there's the basic kit. And the basic kit pretty much comes with one screen, one, one machine. As you'll see, there's an unboxing video getting around. But um, as, a, as a general rule, um, we, we'll coat one screen here. Then you'll know what, it, what we're doing. And then you'll then you sort of, okay, so it's no longer a mystery of where it all comes from. So let me grab a screen. Okay, um, so this is um, coating a screen. Once you coat a screen, you just put it in the dark room overnight and it's like um, if you've got like fans, like hot, like a heater, like a little electric heater, you can actually speed up this process quite a lot by, um, by putting heat on it and you can sort of get it down to, like when we do classes, we do a one day class and um, we can be in and out of the dark room in 45 minutes, yeah. It's nice if you've got an hour, we try to coordinate having lunch around that time. And so all I'm doing is I put emulsion in. This is the big trick. This, this is a really big one people learn in classes. On the back, because you have this room here, you can sort of put emulsion right up to the sides. And then you sort of tilt it back and you cut it off. And I know that sounds really obvious. But you get to the top, you tilt it back. It's like having a drink of water and tilt it in the glass back before you take it away from your mouth. And then on the inside, you can't do, you can't get right into the corners, but you don't have to because it's on the back. And so, you, once again, you pour. And look, people will always try and tell you this golden rule of how many, of how many strokes to do. But if you do two on the front and two on the back, it's generally a pretty good result. And you can do different variations of that, and you'll get your own style. You know? It's like, this is all we're doing, just a business card. It's my little brother's business card, yeah? Paul Woods, he's a web designer. Eh? <laughs> um, but business cards are fantastic for this. And it's like, so you see that little piece of mess up here? Now I can clean this off, and I will do. But technically it doesn't even matter, because see, your image is in here. One of the big, one of the big mistakes people do is they try to fill their screen with image. But really you want that sort of that bad amount of room for ink and you want that amount of room for ink and you put your image in the middle. There's sort of workable sizes and stuff on the website. Feel free to have a look on the upload page. There's a full template there. But now this will go into a dark room and it's like, don't panic. Like a lot of people will panic and they want to run to the dark room. They think this is exposing and all that sort of stuff. And when you're shooting, it's the same, right? But basically, if this goes in the dark room, the dark room can be the box that you got the machine in. It can be a wardrobe, it can be under your bed. It doesn't really matter as long as it's dark. Yeah, it's just got to be dark and preferably not dusty because then dust won't get into your emulsion. But that's all you got to do. And it's like, like my, my favourite dark room when driving, if I'm travelling somewhere, if, like at least in the old days, I'm a bit more organised these days. But I would just put a screen down and put another screen on top of it and put a black sheet over it. And that's a dark room. Um, there's so many different variations of dark rooms that don't cost $8,000, you know. 
that's one of them. But anyway, so I'll put this in my dark room and then we'll expose the screen. But this is where, that's what a screen looks like exposed. Like coated, I should say. Cool. <laughs> so this is our dark room. <laughs> It used to be the girls' toilet, now we just have a unisex toilet. And um, this is now the dark room. But it works well. Now we'll do an exposure. So this is a screen I coated, I don't know, yesterday or so. But um, so it's ready to go. So this is how you would get a screen in a, bra in a black bag. Except it wouldn't have another design in the back of it, it'd just be brand new. Yeah. So okay. Okay, so exposure. Basically all we're doing is we have a screen that's coated and it's dry. And somehow what we need to do is put a stencil on it and get a light source above it. So it's actually really quite um, solid on top of it so there's no light bouncing around. Yeah? And when I find my film, you'll see that on my machine here, we have these marks. And so one of the beauties of this machine is, we lay out where we want it to be, and we actually expose in registration. And that's the whole idea of it. That's one of the, it's one of the true keys. Now you can stick this film to the bottom and, and, and sit it out in the sun, like with a bit of spray, or you can actually sit it inside and put a weight on the top of it, like a piece of Perspex like I'll do now. And you can put that outside and expose in the sun, or you can sort of, there's a lot of really quite expensive light boxes and things like that you can buy, but you don't really need them for this sort of um, application. And you'll see that this design I'm doing is really quite detailed if you get in on that. And it's actually, um, many screen printers watching this would say that's a bit of an insane stunt to do on camera. But hey, look, I'm having fun. And that's what it's supposed to be about. So I'm going to position it about there. And I'm really happy that it sits below my collar. We're sitting in the middle. And my screen's quite a good registration at that point. And I just put this piece of Perspex on top. Now if you don't have a piece of Perspex, it can be glass, um, or you can just spray, like with the spray tack, which I've sort of, I'll show you some later, um, and it just and stick the film to it. Either way, it's the same, it's the same um, apparatus, because all you're trying to do is get this, the film really hard onto the emulsion. So we'll just go for a walk. Actually, let's go there for it. And what we're looking for is about a minute or so in the sun. Thank you. Can you do the clock? Are you going to watch? So we'll just sit in the sun for a minute. It's a pretty hot day. So a minute will do it. And um, a lot of people actually say less would do it. So it's like, um, I've, I've exposed them in 45 seconds. But so all it is is like, the sun obviously, it's going through this clear perspex, it's hitting my stencil. And everywhere that the sun doesn't hit the stencil, because the stencil's 100% black, it's actually cooking the emulsion. And so what we'll do now next is we, we hit the screen with water and then we can wash out the design. Everywhere the black was, we'll wash out. And this is just, it's a really simple process. They actually developed it in the 30s. It's not new and it's not old. Um, it just sort of still works. And that's the whole emphasis of it. And these days what it does is it allows us to do a bit more authentic art. This is our street, it's all developers. 
But hey, they're gonna develop it sometime. Okay, what's the time? So that's a minute? Cool. So we've done a minute, so that's plenty of time. Should we get a shot of Terry Packer there? Pull our film off, put it down and we wet it. As soon as you wet it, all the process finishes. And so it's now, if we sort of let it sit for a second, but the whole emphasis is on, once we wash this out, it's actually exposed in registration. And this is the key. I'll give this like let it rest for a minute and then I sort of won't because we're on camera but <laughs> I'll just hit it but you would normally just let it rest for a minute and then you start washing it out you'll see now if we hold it up to the sun I sun hold it the light, you can see where, what's not washed out and what's washed out. You can get in on that detail. So it's really quite fine. It's not quite perfect yet, but we'll get it all out now. Perfect. Expose it if you just put it in the sun, it sort of just sets it. It's really quite good. Leave it out there for two hours if you want, but it just sets it, really makes it a permanent thing. But always check your screen to make sure you've got all the good bits out. Okay, so because this is a new machine, I'll grab my machine I'm working on all the time and we'll do a really quick print. Alright, so um Here's my machine, you can see I use this one a fair bit, there's a lot of, a lot of mess on it. But, um, so I just sort of want to show you what, what the whole idea of, you put a t-shirt on here and what you need it to do is not to move. Because then when you do multiple colours it does not move. And therefore um, your registration is still true. Now I did a print the other night and it was just like, um, I shot all the screens on this before I left. And I just took the screens to the place and took the machine to the place. And we um, printed all night. And we also did their cards which I'll show you. But um, so instead of the spray, the spray, this is the spray I was talking about that people use for films. And we can't send that overseas, so we can't send it to the States or whatever, but everybody knows what that is. Um, we send this around Australia, but in Europe and States, they've sort of got to find your own. But basically all it is is a sticky glue, and you can sort of spray it onto your platen like that. I have this other preference of I have um this it's called a table adhesive which you also get from Permaset and it's just like um I put some of this on that's a lot <laughs> that's a lot and what it does is it just allows you to print all day long or at least a lot longer and um we don't really have to worry about the sprays this is pretty um Standard issue from a hardware shop, but also a hairdryer will do at home. It's the same sort of thing. All you're trying to do is just try that off. So it'll stick. So 
Rhino screen printers will just work with this all day and do hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of t-shirts. But also now a lot of screen printers that really swear by the glue. And the glue's, I think, is just like so much better environmentally. And it'll last like five times longer than the spray. That's really, really sticky. Alright. So my first print. This is the print we did the other night. At the launch of my friend's new business. It's called Shambucha. So it's all about, he's got these great recipes for kombucha, And that's his new product. And I'll show you the films they came from. This one we did his swing tags with. We were going to do business cards, but we ran out of time. That's his swing tags that he put around the bottles. So his piece of cardboard cut out, put a piece of string through it. And these are the three layers of his t-shirt. So that's the detail layer. That's your highlight layer. That's a blue. And this is our background or mood color, which is a pink. And you can also say the background of the shirt is a mood color. If you've got a colored shirt on, that's also a mood. And so ultimately in the end, once you sort of start to get a handle of the print, it becomes about the art and about just talking to the colours and just the little nuances around the print. Now it sort of makes it really easy with this because um, it's all registered in, it's all exposed in registration. And so we just grab a t-shirt and literally walk up to the And you push your push t-shirt down so it's nice and flat. And we just line up with the first screen and just make sure that's a good height for our collar. So if you can have it really close to the collar, we sort of don't want to come in too close because it's almost like threatens people. So what I want to do is I want to raise that collar up by about an inch. And that sort of gives me room on top of the, on top of the image. So I was here before and what I would do, this is like, like I could say halfway between here and the imprint thing, right? Just like being realistic. If you mark this stuff, it just works. And it's like, I always think it's about the systemization of it. Because like what we, what we want to do is we want to play with the art. We don't want to have to double think all the time about the technicalities because the technicalities should be solved at this point. So I'm just going to put a piece of tape there and I rise my collar to the tape. And I know all day, it doesn't matter if I print a hundred of these, that's where I line up every collar to. And therefore, my art is always going to land in that exactly the same spot. Which is right there. My collar starts there. So that's a two finger gap. Now I, I sort of like to work with two or three fingers depending on the on the 
width of the ribbing yeah and um, different sort of shirts are better but this is basically what we're going to do and we'll do a one color here and then we'll do a three color around it but i'll show you what the one color looks like that looks like by itself Here's my so i've just mixed up a gray this is just a mixture of permacet black and permacet white and i've actually put a bit of opaque white in it so then we can actually use it on a black shirt as well Really straight forward. Okay, so I cover my image. And now I just go into my registration at the back. So it's wide enough, some some screens are wide enough to to leave a gap. It doesn't really matter. You, some of some are actually tight. But what you always do is you always register to, you, to your side corner. So if you're left-handed, you could register to the left-hand side corner. If I'm right-handed, I always register here. And therefore, that's how I always expose as well. So the ink's on my image. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull the ink forward. Now, what I've got is I've got about a 45-degree angle on my squeegee. And I know where my image is. Actually, I'll, sh I'll show you this. This is a really good, it's a really good um, thing to know. One of the first things I like to do whenever we're teaching is I'll put a mark on the side of the screen where the top and the bottom of the image is. So then when you come through and you print, I know that if I print past that mark, that I've got past the image. And therefore I can just relax, I know I've got it all. And then I'm trying not to hit this end, I'm trying not to hit that end, I'm trying to keep my screen clean while I'm doing it. And then we crack, and it's on the same angle as we came forward, to 45 degrees I put the blade behind the ink and I just softly just push it back over the image so now it's not going to dry so now I can take as long as I like to um to change the t-shirt or to change color so if I'm printing two or three colors while that's flooded like that and they call it flooding it won't dry so I might print two other colors and that'll still be fine and so now, so that's a detail layer. So it's got all the story in it. What I call all the story. So these other, these other screens really add color to it. This has all the story in it. Therefore, this is, this is where all the, details, all the detail is. So you could actually print this and sell this as it is. Now, if you wanted to dry this first, you can dry it with your heat gun. And there's a lot of different ways to cure a print. To cure a print. And now this is not good enough to send, to send out as a as a commercial product, but I'm going to tell you a few ways that are. But so we can just leave that as that, and that's a black and white t-shirt. And you'll notice also, because I've done that bit of grey through it, it's not a stark black. And a lot of, a lot of, um, a lot of pe people, when you see them in markets and that sort of thing, you buy a brand new t-shirt and it's a stark black or a stark white. Everybody wants to go and wash them to take that bite out of them, right? Because someone wants to wear a brand new shirt out on Friday night, right? It's just not cool. But doing it this way, you're like printing in a black or a charcoal. It's already got that worn in look, right? So people put it straight on, they'll actually wear it out that night. Right, so that's a product. Now we still have to dry that better. We still have to cure it properly, but that is the finished print. And if you sort of get in on some of the detail in there, that's a very straightforward screen for us. We only really use three screens and we deliberately do that. So we use a 43T, a 62T, or a 90T. 90T is for paper. You'll get these translations, I'll put them down the bottom of the screen. So it's translations for, for the US, basically. But that's a, this is a 62T, so it's a detailed screen. So I'll just put this over here. One of the big things we sort of always designed, we always designed this product around the idea of a one bedroom flat or a share house in Newtown, you know? And the whole idea was, if you, um, if you just printed and laid everything on, on, over the lounges at night, and over like, you know, the cat, I don't really care, you know, lay them everywhere or around the house and let them air dry overnight. Then in the morning, you go to a laundromat and you walk in and you see the dude that owns the laundromat and you just say, hey, listen, what's your hottest dryer? Alternatively, and like with the hottest dryer, you, you give him $5, put it in the hottest dryer and you go get a cup of coffee, come back 20 minutes later and all your, all your shirts are actually cured to a commercial level. 
And alternatively, look, what I really struck me when I was in Samoa was um, because I know these are all registered in shot in registration, I have absolutely no risk of doing this on the film, on camera, because it's just going to work. Um, because in Samoa and places as such, there's not a lot of equipment like this, like our proper heat tunnels and that sort of thing. But what we do have, actually, this is really good to watch. Come and have a look at this. But this is getting a little bit thick. This is an old ink I used the other night when we printed these for my friend. So I just get water. And that's the beauty of water-based things. You get a couple of stirs and it'll come back to perfect consistency. And when you're thinking about ink, just think of it like, you sort of want it like a, um, like a paint, like a, like an acrylic paint, if you're, if you're a painter. But it's sort of like, you pick it up and if it drops off, you're good. But you need it to flow. But so you can just, you just always know that with your water-based things, you just add water and bring them back. All right, so here we are, pink. And so you'll see, like Bunkway, how he's done his art here. It's really quite restrictive, like he's not very much room for ink at all. But that's just Bunkway, and he's got to do that, you know, because that's his art, you know. That's, that's one of the things you've sort of got to push within the boundaries of the technology, but also push out to the boundaries of the artist. Okay, so here's the first colour down. So I'm just going to flood. Okay, so I'm going to go. I'll first of all mark my screen. So that's where my image starts and finishes. I'm just going to go two strokes towards myself. One, two. And when you think about two strokes, think about like the first one breaks the surface tension of the fabric and it sort of makes everything wet and the second stroke pushes it in like a tattoo. So if you want to get really, really sure of how your things are going to wash, just go a couple more. Okay, so that's the pink. So come over and have a look at the pink. So that's your first stage. So I'll just try this out, because we're not going to pick it up between things, we're just going to dry it. And if you get these guns, you can get really quite close and turn it up flat out. Just dry it off really quick. What we're trying to do by exposing in registration, if we're trying to take away all this guesswork, because what we want to do is we want you to be able to get to the art. Because if we spend all day making this rule really complicated, no one's going to be able to get to the art. So this is made to be the simplest we can possibly make screen printing. And as you'll see, this is a, you know, this is a really, quite brilliant design but we're starting just with good design um, the story of making the print should not be a drama once we get there once you get the time in motion in and you're flowing so this one's all right this one's good I'll still give it a bit of a mix grab a squeegee Now with this one I've got lots of room. So I know that I'm there and I'm there. This one's a really easy print. Lots of room. Okay, so same again. I can pick that up, just push it across. Now I put it in the rego into my right hand corner, come down. That's my first hit, my second hit. You'll find when we do it on black later on, might do two or three more. Well, there's actually a flash process we can do as well. So there's your second color. Okay, so we have our mood and our highlight, and now we're gonna bring it all together with the detail layer, which is the same gray we printed before. And so this is adding colors in, in like, just adding substance around it.
<laughs> and it actually looks like it's really out of rego right now, which is cool. Cool. Okay, so. Okay, once again, we're going on to which is, you know, many people would consider a wet print. And so you sort of use the front of the machine like a hinge. Yeah? So the front of the machine is like a hinge. And what you do is you come into the back. Here's like, we put a lot of thought into this. It's actually a patented design. And it's like um, patented everywhere. Australia, New Zealand, US, Europe, UK. But so we're now our third colour on. Two. And if you want to, you can just go with three. I like to sometimes just do an empty squeegee. So you do a print pretty much with no ink on your squeegee. And it just sort of cuts it off. Yeah. So now we're going to crack this off. This will finish my print. That's a sick print. Yeah, it's wild, isn't it? That is really great. This is also bunk wire. Um, I really, um, oh, just creative, creative, nice. creative, creative. And that's the thing, that's the thing, this is what we want to get everybody past, we want to get everyone past the idea that everything has to be correct. Like we're shooting this video today, it's just got to be shot, it's like it's not about getting it wrong or not caring, but we're trying to get artists away from the fact that everything has to be perfect all the time. And what we can do is we can just sort of chill and make a product from your art, as opposed to work out all the reasons why we can't do that. Yeah, and so if you see over here, so that's two variations of the same artwork. So now we'll do a third variation of the same artwork. Because it's all about finding the extra leverage that's available in the, in the design. And you'll notice I'm not going to keep spraying this because we've got, we're using the table adhesive and so it's really quite sticky and you'll notice I don't have to measure where my shirt goes anymore because it's just like I know where it is because of the tape. We don't have to think about registration because we know the shirts are, we know the screens are all registered. As we put down the shirt, a good thing to remember is you can feel your seams along the side to see how straight it is and sometimes you can pull it out like that. One of my golden rules of t-shirt printing is um, there's no such thing as a straight person or a straight t-shirt. Everybody's a little bit bent. <laughs> okay, so this is a black t-shirt. Now I've mixed these, these inks, these are actually opaques, so you can use opaques on white, but it's like um, there's two sorts of inks, there's actually three sorts of inks. There's an opaque ink, which is pretty much about light colors onto dark fabrics. So it blocks out the dark fabric below it. And aqua ink, which is just a transparent ink, which is what you would normally use on a white t-shirt. And it's transparent, um, usually softer. But the thing is, it's like um, with an opaque ink, it will sort of print across everything. And they always wash really well because there are a lot of binders in them. Technically, like the technical makeup, there's lots of binders in them. And there's also another, there's also another ink, which I may or may not use today, but it's for paper. But it's like you can actually use all of these for either, yeah. And I wouldn't be using poster inks on the t-shirt, but I certainly would use textile inks on paper. You'll 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 get a better result using poster inks. On paper. That actually looks really quite good on the same. Okay, once again. So the hinges at the front of the machine. That's the hinge. It's not a real hinge, right? It's an imaginary one, everybody. I'm just imagining it there, right? And I lock into my back corner. 
So I'm, touch points are here, here, and here. And I go down. And I go one, two, three. And so you can see this. You can see this penetration here. You can sort of still see a lot of the black t-shirt behind it. So what we'll do. So this is the big holy grail with the machine because it was, this was all, always our test to see if the machine would really work and it's sort of like um we've done so many now you just get really confident after a while and it's like um so technically this one we put it back over here with our registration system here our rudimentary registration system which is sort of like always in doubt until you see it um, now we'll just print directly over that. And so you can see I've lifted the opacity of that blue. But we still maintain these reversed out lines. Anyway, it's all very, very technical, but I'm just trying to show you that it's possible. And I've used a grey, simply because I planned ahead and I was thinking, okay, I want this same um, detail layer to go on a black and on a white. So there has changed a lot of the nature of the art, but it's still the same art. You know, I don't have to dry that now, but um, so what you do is you always crack when you're taking the shirt off. You always get underneath it and crack it first. The world is full of t-shirts that people sort of spring off. Because it's still wet, they smudge. So there's your third product. Yeah, but it's still, you've got to keep coming back to, remember the first product is this black and white one. So that's your first product. Really quite simple, straightforward, but very, very wearable. You know, the next product, just because we're out, I'm doing one, I don't know if we should. Will that fit? Yeah, that'll just fit. As I can see my shadow here from the other night, I know exactly where it's going to fall. So I'll just drop a piece of cardboard on that. So what I'm always looking for with art and ideas is just what's the next extension? Where can we take it? Because so many people think their art only has one life. And a lot of people will tell you not to use textile inks on paper. And that's cool if you don't want to print paper. A lot of the artwork we work with is really, um, it's never supposed to be perfect. But what it's supposed to be is supposed to be real. And you can see what, like, we're getting pretty close to perfect. Same angle, 45 degrees. I pick it up, I know where I've printed. Between these two marks, I pick it up, I just flood back. I can keep doing this all day. Like in a night, at home, you could possibly print 
I don't know, 150 shirts. Like if you're doing a one colour job, you might print 300. So there you go. It's fourth product. And just so you get the real idea, So here's um, another product, which we did on the night. And so this, um, this is free swing tags, and so we just use the same ink, really. Same ink. Doesn't really matter. So this is a this is a poster ink, so it's going to be it's going to handle the finer details a little bit better onto paper. And so this is the Permaprint Premium brand. It's a Permaset brand. And it's pretty much the same deal. Okay. So if you think business cards, swing tags. Just jumping on there on the detail. And so there's your business cards. Okay, the last um, the last holy grail is the half turn. Um, I've got a really simple rule. Um, write this down. You've got a pen and paper. You should be writing all this down. Um, 45 degree angle, Euclidean dot, so it's an oval dot, um, at 45 dpi. Now that sounds like really coarse. Graphic designers normally work with 300 dpi and, and such for publications, even like a, a web image is 72 dpi. But here we are working at 45 dpi, but you'll get an idea. I'll print this onto paper and it will zoom right in on the detail and sort of, sort of see where the detail's at. And so at 45 dpi, as opposed to going to 60 dpi or 90 dpi or something like that, this allows us to keep printing. So if you print and you flood, you can keep printing all day. Whereas opposed to if you go to 45, um, 45 it's, sort of, it's, it's, a, it's a big enough hole to keep open and wet. And if we go to 60 or 90, it starts to dry that little micro bit every time you, every time you print. And so that's a too, too, it's too fine a dot to stay open. And so all you have to remember is pretty much 45 dpi is a working half tone size dot for screen print. So 45 dpi at 45 degree angle and an oval dot. And I sort of, there's another little story behind the 45 degrees, but it's, it's, it's the angle that your eye sees the best. Yeah, anyway, so here we go. Nice and straightforward. Okay. See, that's what it is, and that's and that'll translate. Like, some people may not think that's good enough for a poster, and some people think it is. Andy Walhall would think that was extremely fine. Um, but see, so you've got your poster. I'm actually printing it down around here. Up. <laughs> so there you go, this proves that it's real, right? Oh. <laughs> I'm just staying with it. So this is the same print, but on a shirt. I'm going to go twice because I want to get the detail into the fabric.
And apart from the little streak from my dirty fingers, it's a pretty basic badass half turn. And the reason I printed this, I want to show you the wash up. It's really quite an important point. With your wash up, the majority of people don't have a wash bay like this. But what you have got is, is a water based inks, and so you can wash up pretty much anywhere. Um, but it's still, it's still one of the biggest dilemmas with, with home printers on how to, where do you wash up, how do you do it. And so the whole story here is if we get all the ink out of it first, that's our first step. And it's like, um, the first thing we do is get all the ink out. And if you have to travel, like the other week when we um, printed the Sham Butcher, the Sham Butcher t-shirts, we printed them um, some in a different studio. It was just like it was actually in a, at a bar. And all we did with the screens afterwards is we spray them wet and we put them in, in um, plastic garbage bags and then bring them back to somewhere to wash them. And that somewhere, if, you've, um, if you can scrape all the ink out like this, and wet it, even if it's only so slightly. So even if you wet it, so if it's one of these, and then put that into a garbage bag, then you can take it to somewhere to wash it better. And it's like, I can't say wash this in your garden, but it, but it is pretty much organic um, a base. But it's very hard to prove anything like that legally, but I do know the chemists, I do know what they're using. Because we're here, now we've got the excess ink out. And just wash out with water. Now the big, the big thing to keep in mind is, if you're doing this in your shower, or something like that, if, you, if you're using colours, it'll stay in the grout. And if you do it in your garden, it's actually not so bad. But it's like, if you do it in your shower, it'll stay in the grout. Because a lot of people, what they'll do is they'll wet it like this. And they put it in the garbage bag and they go down to the car wash. And just don't show the car wash going. Or, just get outside in the gutter. But the point is, all we're using is water. Water, water, water every time. And that's perfectly usable again. And I've only used water. I didn't even use a sponge or anything like that. So it's very, very, very simple, very straightforward. No chemicals involved. So now we want to talk about product. Really quickly. Um, that's a product. And obviously we've done the poster with it. Um, this is a product. It's a really interesting extension. And so when you think about these posters we did before, and the t-shirts we did before, you just start thinking about the capability of the machine. It's really all about just addressing your art. And so, there's a whole lot of um, wedding invitations we did on the same machine. You know, you can print. You know, tea towels, perfectly legitimate product. Matter of fact, tea towels have a real place in people's families and people's houses. That it's like an extremely interesting place to put graphics. And you can have like really high end. It depends what you call high end, of course. These sorts of business cards on like 300 GSM card, raw, non gloss. Well, that's actually a heavy card. And I deliberately use these cards because it's like people put them in their keyboards. And they keep them and this is actually really hard to do and it's like it's probably it's in the league of letterpress but without having to go to the expensive letterpress because letterpress is really quite expensive 
Then you've got to sort of get to things like this where we can actually print on the products. There's a lot of scope and it goes a lot wider. But it's like that's just to wet your whistle and sort of get your idea around the flexibility around this machine. Um, from here, all you really want to do is talk about curing your t-shirts because your posters are going to dry. They're all going to naturally air dry, especially with the um, permaprint inks. They're technically like a varnish and so it'll dry very, very fast. So if you're printing posters, you print 10 and you can start stacking on top of each other. They dry that fast. But with t-shirts, they have to be dried to a professional level so they wash when people get them home. And so what I normally do is I say, like, you can iron them. Like, once they're air dried or touch dried or, or a little bit UV dried, you can iron them and that'll really, really dry them. Or you can, there's a heat press, there's a heat press unit you can buy, $400 if you really want to do it and get right into it. Um, and there's heat tunnels you can buy for thousands and thousands of dollars, but that's not what, what, what we're about here. But I really love the idea of using dryers down at laundromats. And I do three, it's either that or the sun. If you hang them on a line in the sun, the sun will cure them. And it's like these inks are UV curable, and that's how all the islands work, all the Pacific islands work. It's all UV curable. Um, I'm trying to think, what have I forgotten? What have I forgotten? Look, there's, uh, there's little, there's other pieces of equipment that you can buy that makes doing this on a commercial level smoother. But really, it's like what we've showed you is all you really need to get going and get going in a really serious way. There's no reason you couldn't print 150 t-shirts in a day. Um, and if you want to calculate that out at $4 a t-shirt and be a professional and be a commercial printer, you know, that's $600. But that's a, that's a, it's not really what we're doing here. Like there's lots more scope in it than that. We've printed jobs that are worth thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars very, for very small pieces. And we've also printed posters. A lot of our exhibitions are based around posters and they'll be $80 each. And we might print a limited edition of 20. Um, it's really about the story and it's about taking your stuff to market. So it becomes about if you have a theme for an exhibition or a theme for your brand or a theme for what your group of people are doing or a theme for what you like to do in your art practice, then you carry that theme through onto garments um, and whatever else. But that's it. This is supposed to be instructional. I know it's a long video, but I hope you really enjoyed that. Um, there'll be more coming. We are doing an online course. We're mostly doing Kickstarter coming up, but it depends on when you're watching this video. I'd say this Kickstarter is already finished, but um, like this is just supposed to be a walkthrough. Watch what I do, rewind it back, yeah, what did he do again? That's that's rubbish. That didn't work for me. How did he do that? And it's like really, it's about just going in, and having a go. It's the old thing, um, the old Anthony Robbins thing. You know, you can have knowledge and you can have power and you can have um, time management. You can have goals. You can have all these things. But unless you actually go in and just start doing it, you don't actually learn. And you learn through repetition by burning those neural pathways by really focusing in and getting good at something this becomes another skill like this is a this is a bona fide skill and it's like once you get this in then we start to really think about the art and it's like we've done art for hundreds and hundreds of people here now and it's fun and this is everything you thought art was going to be and this is actually deliverable 100 percent deliverable and our classes are just about being really really clear on that it's like just it's got to be doable like, I want to wear these, both these t-shirts home. They're perfectly commercial products. Anyway, this is Bunkwa too. The designs are by Bunkwa. Have a look at his website. He's pretty pro pretty prolific. But, um, look, we're in printer. Sign on for our newsletter. We want to tell you more. Cheers. <laughs>